Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Oath of the Fairy not particularly playable. Looking at the uncommons, Spore Swarm is playable if unexciting. Of course going to be at its best in the Sapperling archetype, black green. And there's some go white themes as well, but they're not very pronounced. And then Halar is a solid uncommon as well, of course commits us to two colors right away. Red green is a fine archetype, just doesn't come together as often as maybe some other archetypes like blue red. So I'm not necessarily too excited about first picking Halar. Looking at the commons, the ones that stand out are Journey Mage in blue and then Scattering Surveyor that can enable all sorts of splashes and is just a decent card by itself. Surveyor is not a bad first pick just because it allows for so many options in future packs in terms of uh, splashing powerful cards, fixing our mana. Not sure if I would take Halar over Journey Mage or not, just because the wizard archetype is quite strong. This is only one color. I think I would take Journey Mage over Halar still, but I think I might just take Surveyor over both and then we'll start our draft with some mana fixing. All right, second pick. Well, Mirari Conjecture is a powerful card. Do need to build around it to some extent, since otherwise it's uh, not going to do much. But if we take it early enough, it shouldn't be too hard to pick up a few opts and divinations and removal spells. What else do we have? Rona, decent card as well. Bit of synergy with the Surveyor as well. There's a Blessed Light as a solid removal spell. I think Blessed Light is usually better than Fire Intervention, the Instant Speed and Exile are both relevant, even though I think red is a better color than white. Gorger is a playable card, but not necessarily a second pick worthy card. So I think the considerations here are Conjecture, Rona and Blessed Light, but I think the Conjecture has more upside. And if we take it second pick, we have enough time to make sure we have enough instants and sorceries. And we could even potentially splash Conjecture thanks to Surveyor, although it's more likely that we want to end up with a few blue card draw spells to combine with Conjecture. So I think we'll start there. And now we could take Wrath. We already want to be in blue for Conjecture. Could be blue-white. Surveyor could maybe help splash for white if we're like a blue-red deck. And the, the rest of the pack is pretty weak. There's nothing I really want. So it seems like a pretty straightforward wrath here. You can also play our Conjecture at instant speed. All right, Divination. Want to start picking up these instants and sorceries. And Divination's a great card by itself and plays great with Conjecture. So it seems like the pick here. Otherwise, Call the Cavalry, also playable and also synergizes with Conjecture. So. If uh, there wasn't Divination in the pack, I would take Call the Cavalry. Now we have to make somewhat of a decision. I think Deathbloom Thalad is a better card on Mesa Unicorn. So the question is, do we want to take the Deathbloom Thalad and then maybe we'll end up as a blue-black deck with a bit of white for Wrath? Or we could just stick to blue-white and take a Mesa Unicorn. I think those are the main considerations. I think I would take both of those over... Arcanist, even though Arcanist has a bit of uh, synergy with all the instants and sorceries we were going to end up with, considering we're a Mirara Conjecture deck, but I think these cards have more upside. I don't dislike the Unicorn, especially if you can combine it with some bound spells, some equipment, so it can keep attacking, gaining life, make it difficult for the opponent to race. And since they're relatively close in power level, but we already have a Wrath, it probably makes more sense to take the Unicorn. Now we could consider Syncopates. We have a Wrath that we can play at instant speed. If we're going to play Conjecture, it's pretty likely that we'll end up with more instant speed things we can do, including Syncopate itself as an instant we can return with Conjecture. So, pretty good pickup. And I don't mind me a Cold Water Snapper as kind of a curve topper. Board the Weatherlight, even though we have a bit of synergy with it, it can find Conjecture, Wrath, Surveyor. Your deck really needs a ton of cards to hit with the Border Weather Light before even considering it, since if it misses, it's kind of a disaster. I don't know the numbers exactly, but my guess is around at least 10. We're definitely not guaranteed to find 
seven more in the next two packs. I think we'll take the snapper. Tragic Poet can also get Conjecture back, so that's a nice kind of a late game engine play we can make. But uh, we're somewhat likely to get a Tragic Poet later anyway, since it's not a very high pick. And it's maybe also a little bit too cute, since that involves drawing Poet, drawing Conjecture, and also having enough instants and sorceries to get value from Conjecture in the meantime. Maybe a bit too convoluted. And not much here that we want. I'm not a fan of the assistant. There are some people that like the birds, assistant and uh, two mana, one one first strike flyer. I'm not one of those people. Could consider the wall as a reasonable blocker. Sorcerer's Wand is actually a decent win condition, especially if we're blue with a few wizards. Just being able to put this on a creature ping and then move the equipment to a second creature and activate it again means we can quickly add up to a lot of damage and also interesting to note if we equip our mesa unicorn we gain one life since a unicorn has life link if it deals damage with the wand we also gain one life so it has a bit of synergy there so i don't mind picking this up as kind of a speculative win condition in case we don't end up with any flyers or other ways to win the game now we'll take the opts to go with our conjecture and I guess we'll consider Rescue over Charge. Don't think we'll play it, but Rescue does have a bit of synergy in our deck. We can return uh, our Conjecture, for example, back to our hand after getting a bit of value from it. So it could have some interesting applications. Sometimes you can fit in Zelfer and Void in the mana base if you're not too heavy on the color requirements. Doesn't come up often enough that I think we take it over the Relic Runner, which might end up in our deck if we don't end up with more 2-drops. We've got a reasonable number of Historic Spells already to make this unblockable, so might make the cut. Uncommon for the Vault. Alright, so first pack went okay, I wouldn't say great. Don't have any removal spells outside of a Syncopate as a counterspell. Uh, Conjecture is powerful, but we'll need to pick up way more instants and sorceries before it becomes great. Although looking at the packs, we didn't really give up on much, so the packs were sort of on the weaker side. At least after the first and second packs, which had some good removal spells in them. Wish we could take all the cards here. Shall is great, Ansara's Wings is great, Tome is fine, Blessed Light is great. So Shall I is probably just going to be a 3-4 flyer giving everything else hexproof, which is still a pretty good deal. But we're not going to have the activated ability, which is... The real ground stall breaker on Sarah's wings, pretty powerful in combination with Cold Water Snapper. If we can enchant our hexproof creature, give it flying, lifelink, and vigilance, it's pretty much game over. If we enchant a different creature, then we need to be able to protect our creature with on Sarah's wings, or just hope the opponent is out of removal. Blessed Light, sold removal spell. We are looking for more removal. It's also an instant we can get back with Conjecture. So, also has a lot going for it. I think I would take Blessed Light over on Sarah's Wings with the current configuration, just because we're lacking removal and we're lacking instants and sorceries for Conjecture. Normally, you would probably take on Sarah's Wings over Blessed Light, but given the current configuration of our deck, I think I prefer Blessed Light. Now the question is, do we want Blessed Light over Shalai? That's a tough one, since Shalai is a very efficient creature. Probably gotta go with Shalai. It's also a historic spell we can flash in with Wrath, worth noting. But again, Blessed Light would be great too. <laughs> well then, how deep do we want to go? We've got a Wrath, we've got a Shalai. How many do we need for Runa's Blast to be good? Probably need at least like four legendary creatures, I would say. So we would need to get lucky and wield the Baird. Or pick up some more legendaries like maybe a Tetsuko. There's a couple. Yeah, it's only... Pack 2, pick 2, so we have enough time to maybe pick up a few more. What are we taking if we're not taking Runa's Blast? Baird. Baird is a fine card, not exciting. 2-4 Vigilance with a little bit of upside. Probably taking the Blast here. Also, Sweet Synergy with Conjecture. Can get it back from the Graveyard. Alright, so first off, let's check for any Legendary Creatures. No Legendary Creatures in this pack. We do have a Wizard's Retort, which looks okay. Would like a few counterspells in this deck. Uh, Even Sentry would also be decent. 
as an extra flying creature, although we already have Wrath and Shalai at 4. And Deep Freeze would be serviceable, even though it's not an instant or sorcery, so any non-creature spell that's not an instant or sorcery we have to be extra critical about because of the presence of Conjecture. So I think we'll take Retort and then hope to wheel an Opt or a Deep Freeze. Alright, no legendaries in this pack. Do have Call the Cavalry as a sorcery for Conjecture and a 4 mana play. Can we afford to take it over Journey Mage is a question. How many wizards do we have? Not that many. Wrath is a wizard, and that's it. Of course at 5 mana it's still a fine card, but it does get significantly better if we can play it for 4. Call the Cavalry is nothing special, just kind of clogs up the ground, maybe gets in an attack, but usually gets blocked pretty quickly. Probably gotta go with the Journey Mage still, since our deck is a bit low on interaction and Journey Mage gives us a bounce spell built into a creature. Wouldn't mind another Syncopate. Yeah, Tome is a nice card draw engine. We have a decent number of historic cards between Wand, Surveyor, Wall, Wrath, Shalai, Conjecture. So it will often just draw us a card. Trapper, decent creature as well, if we're trying to be a bit more aggressive. I don't necessarily think our deck is super aggressive. We're trying to play a somewhat longer game, extract value from our Conjecture, maybe wipe the board with a Runa's Blast and then fly over with Wrath and Shalai. Maybe ping the opponent out with a Sorcerer's Wand. So I think the Urza Stone plays better in that game plan since we also get to combine Urza Stone with counter spells. If we keep up 3 mana we can either activate Tome, draw a card, or we can cast a Retort or Syncopate. So I think I'm leaning Tome over Trapper just because I don't think our deck is quite that aggressive. So we'll take a two. And very happy with the blink, exactly what we're looking for, plays great with Conjecture, can bounce around Conjecture, and keep looping those, and we're looking for more interaction, and this is kind of perfect. Do we take a second snapper, or do we take another opt? I wouldn't mind another opt. Just having those cheap cantrips to assemble the different synergies we have in our deck with Conjecture, with Runa's Blast seems worthwhile. Do want maybe another Curve Topper at some point. We might pick up another Snapper later. Although the same can be sent for Opt. Probably just take the Cantrip. Alright, and now we can take our Syncopate, which plays well with our uh, instant speed game plan of activating Tome, flashing in Wrath, keeping up other counter spells. And I don't mind the Scholar, just a reasonable blocker on the ground. 2-3 is actually a pretty good stat line in Dominaria in terms of uh, blocking and another wizard for our different wizard synergies. And now we can consider Arcane Fly to go with our Snapper. Not sure if we have to go down that path as our win condition, but uh, there's nothing else I want here, so I'll take it. And we'll take another Opt. Don't want a Knight of New Banalia. Get a ward anyway. Alright, so moving into the last pack. Definitely want to try and pick up an extra legendary creature or two for our Runa's Blast, otherwise we might not be able to play it. And uh, some more Divinations would be nice, some more removal in general, Blessed Lights, Gideon's Reproach would be great, maybe an extra win condition. Well then, can't forget about our Skittering Surveyor, and it's coming in handy now, as we both have Joyra and Tatiova, two great card draw engines. We already have a bit of a historic theme, so Joyra would fit in perfectly, although Tatiova's great too. Joyra needs a bit more work to draw cards, since it requires more specific card types for mana 3-3, so it has a bit of a better stat line than Tatiova in terms of efficiency. If you want to play Joyra and draw a card right away, then uh, you'll need like at least, I guess, 5 mana for Sorcerer's Wand, 6 mana for Urza's Tome, 7 mana for Surveyor. So it's easier to kind of wait for a Tatiova play land than this for Joyra. But Joyra you can just play on turn 4 as a reasonable card if you happen to have the red mana early. I think it's close, but I'm probably leaning Tatiova. So we'll take Tatiova, of course would love to wheel Surveyor, don't think that's happening. 
Yeah, it is true, worth pointing out that if we go red with a red splash, it's more likely that we pick up some red removal spells. And our deck could definitely use some more removal spells. So that's one of the things that the red splash would allow, whereas a green splash is not going to give us access to more removal. Does that outweigh the fact that I think Tatiova is a bit better than Jora? Maybe. Also worth pointing out is that if we splash green, there's a small chance we end up with double green for Shalai. Alright, we'll use that as a tiebreaker here. Alright, so now we have a Tatiova. Quende, another legendary creature for our Ruinous Blast. Definitely interested in that one. There's also Giddens Reproach as a nice removal spell, which we wouldn't mind at 2 mana. And I guess there's also Grow from the Ashes to synergize with Tatiova, but I don't think we want to splash for our mana fixing. So yeah, this is between Quende and Reproach. Probably gotta take Quende to make sure the Runus Blast is turned on. And also 4 mana 2-2 two -two Double Strike is a pretty good stat line by itself. Now we can take the Reproach over Sergeant at Arms, which is an okay card, but I think we need to approach more helpless answer evasive creatures, which the sergeant does not. I don't think we are aggressive enough to want jousting lands. We would need a lot more cheap creatures before we want jousting lands, even though it is a historic card and might have a bit of synergy there. And some powerful black cards here, Vicious Offering, Soothsayer, Urgros, all very strong cards. Don't think we can really dip into black for those, don't have enough fixing to make that happen. So this is between Honor Guard and Relic Runner. Runner could have some evasion if we play story cards, which is nice. Honor Guard has a bit more toughness, better blocker in the face of 1-1 tokens. And we've got a few legendaries as well, so this might be a 3-2 or a 4-2 every now and then. We'll take the Honor Guard. Alright, pretty happy with the Trickster, plays well with our instant speed counter spells. Plays well with Blink, can keep up mana for Urza's Tome, Flash and Trickster instead. And we needed some more cheap creatures. Ooh, Shana. Well, Shana fits in perfectly. We're already planning to splash green for Tatiova. Extra legendary creature for Urza's Ruinous Blast. Even though our deck doesn't go all that wide, even if we just have like two or three creatures in play, Shana's good enough. So, we'll take it. Guardians of Koilos could have some interesting synergies in our deck. Returning Conjecture before the third chapter hits. But it's maybe too cute. We already have quite a few expensive cards in the deck. So I don't think we have room for more. Did we get there on board the Weatherlights? I guess we could do a count here. How many historic cards do we have? Six, seven, maybe eight, nine, ten, eleven. So earlier we were talking about needing at least 10. Don't know if that's a correct estimate, but it feels right. So board might actually be playable here. Also an extra sorcery for Mirari Conjecture in the first place. What's the alternative? The alternative is Honor Guard. So let's take a look at our entire deck here. Definitely need to make some cuts. I don't think we'll need Arcane Flight as a win condition. I think we've got enough powerful legendaries by now that we can use those to win the game instead. Rescue doesn't seem necessary. I don't think we'll need the wands, so maybe that also reduces the number of historic cards, since we don't have that many creatures necessarily. I'm not sure about the wand yet. I uh, could always shave an opt or two. Relic Runner is potentially cuttable. Blink is more of a 4-drop. Uh, so let's say we shave an opt. Yeah, I don't think wands makes it, and I might also cut the Relic Runner. I don't think the wall is good enough. So what if we cut the wall? Yeah, then the numbers start dwindling. Would we rather have Honor Guard? Yeah, maybe. It's just a reasonable body on the ground, nothing special. All right, we'll take the Honor Guard here. What about Triumph of Gerard? I usually don't really like this type of card. Probably don't have enough cheap creatures to make this worthwhile. Sanctum Spirit is also pretty medium. Don't really want to be discarding our powerful historic cards to make this indestructible usually. Of course the threat of activation makes it tricky to play against. Don't think we'll play the elephant. We could main deck Invoke the Divine if we're afraid of artifacts or enchantments. Bit of life gain doesn't hurt. 
and it's another instant we can keep up alongside the retort and all the other instants we have. There's Guardians once again for the synergy with Conjecture. Definitely don't want Compass, even though it does help with uh, splashing green for Tatiova. Just not worth the card. I would rather just play an extra Forest. Yeah, not sure if this pick matters. We basically have our deck built already. So splashing green for Shana and Tatiova. Probably want at least two Forests. That way we have three green sources with Surveyor for Shana, Tatiova. Only need single white, but we kind of want white early. So our mana base is probably going to be eight islands, seven plains, two forests. We need to make one more cut, maybe an honor guard, maybe an opt. So yeah, I don't think this pick matters. If we were playing best of three, we would definitely take Invoke the Divine for the sideboard. Slim Voda would be a nice sideboard card for the grindy games where we can get to a million mana, but I don't think we can afford it in the main deck. Don't have a ton of sorcery, sadly. But the ones we have are pretty good. So I guess it's still fine for Conjecture. Uh, if we cut an op, do we have enough? Yeah, probably. Yeah, we also have a tome for card draw, so... Shaving an op seems okay. How many legendaries did we end up with? We have Shana, Quende, Shalai, Raf, and Tatiova, so five. It's a pretty good number. We even have a double forest to activate our Shalai that could come up. Alright, I mean, on the draw, we'll easily keep this. Got some early plays we can make. Play Unicorn. The earlier, the better. Get the damage in while we can. We're going to be playing Quende next turn, so playing Honor Guard gets us in more damage. Let's say our opponent plays Call the Cavalry, then they could block the Honor Guard pretty easily. Yeah, still play the Honor Guard, I think. Yep. I guess, are we fine trading Honor Guard for a Knight as well? Nah, I think we'll just attack with the Unicorn. Quende dies, and Knight gets in, and then we have to decide if we want to block or not. Alright, Quende doesn't die. Tome's okay. So we can play Tome Activate, or we can play Tome plus Color. I guess Tome plus Color for now is fine. Put on Chumps. We'll have to find an answer for the 6-6 six, six demon. Ooh. Suitstair plus Rite of Bells Unlock is a very strong combo. Pun now gets to chum block and sacrifice as well. Let's draw some cards. Syncopates. At least that plays well with the tome here. And if we draw Runa's Blast, we want Quende still in play. So I think we chill. If we draw Blink of an Eye, that would be a great answer to the demon. I 
Alright, there's our forest. Sadly, we have to play the forest so we don't get to draw the cards to go off with Tatiova, but Shana is a nice pickup here, so now we get to play our forest, play Shana. As a 4 4. And then next turn we can play Tatiova. If we pick up more lands, we get to get value from our Tatiova triggers. Honor Guard keeps growing. Yeah, I think I'm countering that. It's a bit too much card draw. So land would not be a bad draw. A Wrath instead. Can play instant speed Tatiovas. I guess we can attack with Shana. And we can flash in Wrath as well to grow Shana at instant speed. So if our opponent double blocks Suitsayer plus Knight, then we could still kill both. So we are block. Fair enough. Do they have a removal spell for Quende, maybe? Adamant will, so that becomes a 5-5. So if we flash in Wrath, Shana would still die. Alright, so I guess we let that happen. At least now we'll get a historic card in the graveyard for Tome. Since we really need to dig for either Ursa's Runa's Blast or Blink of an Eye to deal with this demon. Demon gets in there. I guess we should tome in case we draw blink. Alright, get rid of Shana. Take six. Alright, so now we can play Tatiova, play land, and then still activate Tome. And there's our blink, perfect. Alright, so we could blink now, or we could blink with Kicker next turn after taking 6. Either way we want to make them go to their upkeep. So they have to sack a creature first, so Wrath can attack. Anything else that's attacking? Don't think so. So we'll say go, and then uh, see what happens. Yeah, I'm probably just bouncing it now. Don't think it's worth it to take six when we have Tatiova and Thomas Cardra engines. Seems a bit greedy to wait. Oh yeah, they would also sacrifice with the Soothsayer anyway, so... Good points. Waiting to play the kick blink wouldn't help in the face of Soothsayer. Kick Sergeant, so... Now the biggest issue is the Soothsayer, just drawing a million cards. So... I guess we'll lead with Opts. Retorts, I mean, yeah, I'll keep that one. We could main phase the tome, ditch the guard, and then look for a land for Tatiova, maybe. Ooh, hello. Got a divination, syncopate in the graveyard. Our deck is definitely going off. Oh yeah, it also has Flash, so we can play Conjecture Dance and Speed thanks to Raph, for what it's worth. Sure. I think that's fine. And uh, Mirror Conjecture plus Blink means we can keep looping Blink and Conjecture, so... Hey, thanks for the 100 bits there, and Feeble, appreciate it. So 
So let's return blink. Return divination. Now we gotta watch out that we don't deck ourselves, but since we do have Urza's Ruinous Blast in our deck, we can kind of clear the board and then get in quite a few attacks with our legendaries, so I'm not too worried. So either way, let's play our land. Draw a card. Surveyor. It's pretty good too. Should not have tapped our island here, since now we can't have Kick Blink and Retort up. Oh well. Let's take a look at what's left. So we still have a Shalai. Yeah, we've got some good cards left still. I guess we should have gotten a forest in case we draw Shalai. Yeah, we just gotta make sure to put all the stops here so we don't mess up. Opponent's gonna start drawing cards themselves. Alright, so let's go full control. So with a third trigger on the stack. Now. So play a land draw card. Start by attacking. I guess I should have considered maybe casting Divination since if we hit the Runus Blast then we can get a bigger attack in. So do we want to draw four? I think we do. Journey Mage, and there's our Ruinous Blast, so we can Ruinous Blast at instant speed, end of turn. It's gonna be our game plan here. And then we have 4, 7, 10 damage, so they should be dead. Discard land. Yup. Sure. This exiles, so they won't get the token afterwards. Oh man, this is sweet. <laughs> nice. Well, this game was beautiful. All the synergies coming together. Alright, let's keep it up. Alright, so we're on the play, two lands, um, it's a bit sketchy, but we do have Wrath plus Runa's Blast to maybe clear the board, and a second island gets a Strixer, which can also buy some time. So we'll keep... lead with island in case we need to Trickster on two. We need to wait until the trigger from the Conjecture is on the stack, Otherwise, we won't get it, so if we blink the Conjecture in our upkeep, for example, then uh, we're not gonna get the doubling effect from the third chapter from Conjecture. It's the Trickster Mirror. Alright. Nice aggressive start. Alright, hitting our land drops, that's good. So we've got a few options, we can flash and wrath, or we can just go with a trickster plus reproach line instead. I'm not sure which is better. I think I'm flashing in the trickster. Just played conservatively. Opponent does nothing. I'm just gonna chill. Try and make them overextend. Opponent playing green as well. So we're both doing nothing. Don't think I want to flash in Wrath since if it gets countered then we can cast a Runus Blast. Might cast it end of turn though, we'll see. 
Nothing to get back with Conjecture. I'll be patient. Now that we have Quende, getting Wrath countered wouldn't be a disaster. Alright, Pwn and Syncopates. Hmm, I was hoping for a 6 land so we could resolve Snapper, but I guess Quende will have to do. Possible we should have waited until 6 lands so we could make sure that... Uh, Ouch. Fire Fist killing Quende, that's brutal. Probably means they have a run amok. Can punish them with the Reproach. What if we block here? Then next turn we still have the Scholar to block Trickster and if they run amok we can Reproach. Alright. Alright, Force is good. Think we'll resolve the Snapper while we can. And now the fact that they use Runamok means they can't trample over the Snapper anymore, which is good. Gets back the Counterspell. Well, let's try and resolve this while we can. And I think I'll keep up Reproach. So we can cast Runa's Blast next turn if we want to. Although right now there's no need. Alright, let's keep drawing cards. Don't really want to commit more creatures to the board if we're gonna Runa's Blast soon. Not in a hurry. Opponent can sack their Memorial, that's fine. Not sure what the green is for, hopefully not a Multani, since that we can't exile with Runa's Blast. So we have to hope to draw a Syncopate before they drop their Multani. So they want to try and counter Tatiov on the way back. So I guess the plan is play these dorks and then use Reproach on Fire Fist. Maybe that forces the issue on the Syncopate and we can start leveraging Tatiova and friends. So we're playing a weird waiting game here. Hmm, let's see. The problem now, of course, is they can also just double block with two 1-3s on our 2-2. Two -two. So we don't really have any good attacks. All right. I'll attack with a snapper here. Opponent takes it. That's fine. We're making progress ever so slowly. Could double block the Fire Fist, that's kinda bad if they have like uh, Radiating Lightning dealing one damage to all our creatures, because then they finish off this and kill all the 2-2s as well. Could Reproach, doesn't seem necessary. And Goblin Chamberlain, that's unexpected. I guess it's kind of the same as a Radiating Lightning in a sense. But now we can Syncopate the Syncopate, so what happens if we play Tatiova? We'll have three mana left, they have to counter for x equals four, and that's enough to counter it, so I guess we'll go for it. Counter Syncopate. Opponent could have tapped Arcanist for one more mana. And we'll attack. Uh, 
All right. If that survives the Runus Blast, that gets back Syncopate, maybe? A run amok. Thanks with everyone, and it can cast a run amok thanks to Rada, but we have the Reproach. We should have responded to the Rada trigger with the Reproach, so they couldn't uh, cast a run amok, because they were tapped out there. Oh well, we can maybe try and lever this Reproach some other way. I guess if Tatiova blocks like a 1-3, But we kind of want to kill the Rada, since that's going to be left over after Runa's Blast. Yeah, that doesn't work. Yeah, I guess we need to double block Rada, and then take a million. Six. Yeah, I guess this is the only way to really make them do it. And if they pump somewhere else, then we can Reproach, and hopefully they don't have another run amok. All right. Flame of Keld as their last card. Well, Ruin's Blast will get rid of that as well. So we want to get in and attack. Syncopate's a good one. Attack with everyone. This was a sweet game. And this seems fine. And then say go with syncopate up. It's only syncopate for four. So it's not enough here, but that's okay. Keep that one. And a tome. So what can we conjecture back? We can conjecture back reproach. And then keep up Retort plus Reproach. Seems fine. Alright, so we've got the Journey Mage covered, we've got our next play covered. Can get back Runa's Blast with Conjecture. Play Tatiova, play lands. This game was sweet. Journey Mage. But I'm not gonna tap out for it, I don't think. Just wanna keep up retort. Hmm, sure. They wanna counter the card draw, I don't think, in the spots. They're probably drawing a land anyway. I would rather counter the action spells. Blink. No. No. Should have gone full control in case we drew Blink for the turn. Oh well, we'll give up on that value. Now nah, we'll just say go. Siege Gang, nice. Bonus deck's pretty stacked. Let's counter that one. GG's opponents. That was an awesome game. I guess we'll get our value. Can't resist. Number three, we did the chat, finally ranked up. All right. And we're at two and a half wins, apparently. On the play, hand seems good. Lead with Island in case of Merfolk Trickster draws. Uh oh, we're up against a bird person. All right, forests. Blue black. Don't think I'm going to approach quite yet. We'll give it some more time.
Tetsuko could be annoying. Of course, we could reproach Tetsuko as well. But I kind of want to just like syncopate and then play Quende. Yeah, that's reasonable. We want to make sure we have Forest in play um, by the time we have a fifth land in place so we can play Tatiova and then play land afterwards. So I guess we'll play it now. And then I don't expect Quende to stick around. We're not taking too much damage. Right, deep Freeze. Deep Freeze is not as bad as an actual removal spell since we could always blink our own Quende. I think we'll wait to do it end of turn in case we need to reproach. Take one. The one mana blue lava axe. They also got to scry. All right, Rona. It's a good one. So we'll blink Quende now. But we're probably just running out a uh, cold water snapper. Journey mage is good too. Murfolk Trickster can ambush the Assistant at some point. So I guess I don't hate Quende. Although it's going to be somewhat telling that we keep up double blue. I'm going to do it anyway. And then try and ambush this Assistant before he does too much damage. Party Quander is pretty big. Alright, no respect for the Trickster. And there's Tatiova. We could Reproach plus First Strike to kill the Wanderer, although if they have some interaction that could be a blowout. I guess we let First Strike damage happen and then Reproach, it's not like they're playing pump spells in blue-black. Don't really want to bounce Rona, kill Wanderer and have them get back Wanderer with Rona. So maybe just bounce the Wanderer for now and attack. I guess that's reasonable. Opponent's blocking. Alright, not sure what that implies. Maybe a way to get Arona back from the graveyard. But I think we still let it happen, no need to approach. Or they're just too worried about taking damage. Replace Wanderer. We'll attack with Quende. I'm not gonna attack with Journey Mage. If they take it, then we'll play a Snapper. If they block, we'll reproach and then play Tome. I'll go full control just in case that we don't mess this up. Pawn on blocks. So, given that they're tapped out, we're fine to do this now. Otherwise, I would let first strike damage happen and then reproach. And then we'll keep up blue mana. If we draw land, we can play Tatiova, play land. Hopefully, no kicked skin witches here. Surveyor. Let's see if they're splashing. Just an island. Back up Rona. Fair enough. Get back Wander. Alright, let's play Tatiova. Uh, tapping our mana like this is fine. And we can play Unicorn after attacking. Alright, so 
could play a snapper, we could activate Tome to try and hit a land so we can get value from Tatiova while we can. Probably just play a snapper. And now we've got plenty of blockers for the Pardic Wanderer. And then try and leverage Tatiova's card advantage, which is better than Runa. We'll need to find a solution for the Acolytes. Alright, Retort's a good one. So I don't mind main phasing this Tome now. Ooh, hello. So this does not get rid of Rona, but uh, it does get rid of everything else. We'll just chill for now. Ooh, Eviscerate, that's a good one. It's gonna go after Tatiova. We'll have to counter this. Shana as well. Alright, so we've got an interesting spot. We could, like, attack with everyone except the legendaries in the hopes of sneaking in some damage. But if we Runa's Blast right now, we get to attack for 7, put them to 9. Or we could play Shana first to add to the board. Because if we attack with Snapper, they probably just block with Wanderer, so that doesn't get in any damage. And they might make some other trades. Yeah, let's Blast. If we blast first, we get to attack for 7, so we do miss out on the 2 lifelink damage. But I think getting in 7 is more important than gaining 2. Loss a tome, but hopefully we'll draw some lands to leverage Tatiova. Yeah, I'll keep a syncopates. We're ahead on board, so counter spells are good. Could even attack with Tatiova, trade, they take seven. Maybe that's a bit too aggressive. Gets a land. And our opponent scoops it up. Sweet, another pretty awesome game. And our deck seems to be functioning up to number two. Wow. Well, that's definitely screenshot worthy. All right, so on the play, um, not a great hand. We've got an honor guard on turn two. A Shana we can't cast, a Conjecture that doesn't do anything, and a Snapper at 6 mana. So even though we've got lands and spells, the sand is actually pretty bad. Nah, this is much better. And do we want to keep a Plains on top? We do want to hit lands, but we also want to find Forests at some point to cast our green spells. We need double blue to cast our double blue spells. So I don't think we want to keep a planes here. We've got a divination to draw more cards anyway, so we're likely to hit land drops. Let's divinate. Alright, so we could play around a counter spell and main phase Wrath. We could run out Quende. Kind of like the ambush potential of Wrath and then hope they don't have a counter spell. Could also wait a turn to ambush with Raph, so if they counter, then we get to resolve the Snapper. Which is going to be difficult for them to deal with. I guess that's reasonable. Just wait, take one. And this turn we can maybe blink with Kicker. Shana's 
Shall I is a good one too. So we've got a lot of creatures we could flash in if Raf sticks around. It's not like the opponent's pressure is insurmountable here, dealing one a turn. Opponent says go. I want to wait until we have a 6 land in hand before making this play. Because otherwise we're not guaranteed to resolve the snapper. Could also run out to Tolarian Scholar as kind of a mediocre blocker. So now I think I'll go for it. Flash and Wrath to block. And then we'll see what the opponent does about it. Got a Syncopate for one and a Blink as well. Alright, opponent Syncopates. Could Syncopate back, force them to tap out and then resolve Snapper. Or we let this happen and then hope they don't have another Syncopate. And they could have a Wizard's Retort as well. I guess we'll play some Dorks. Possible we should not have played both dorks and just one and keep up Syncopate. So we could play Shalai and then keep up Blink or Syncopate for two. If they sack two goblins to kill Shalai, well presumably they have a counterspell. Uh, if it's Retort, they can't use Arcanists to pay for our Syncopate. But then the Siege Gang can kill Shalai before we can Blink. If it's Syncopate for three, then I guess we can still Syncopate back. So I guess we'll run out Shalai and then kind of hope that uh, this works out. I don't want to play Quende since it dies to a single Siege Gang activation. And we can't snap her and back it up with Blink or Syncopate, so this seems better. Yeah, it's possible we should not have played like the Honor Guard last turn, and we should have just played Scholar, say go. Scholar blocks Arcanist for now. And then uh, we get to say draw go for a while until we hit more land drops. Point's gonna blink, shall I? I guess that's fine. Not gonna fight over it. Because otherwise, if we fight over it, shall I dies to the Siege Gang anyway? Warcry Phoenix, alright. Their approach is not bad. But now they have basically six mana up, so they could syncopate for a million and counter Shalai. Uh, so let's say we play Shalai. They have to syncopate for X equals four. I guess then we can syncopate back, and then Shalai dies to Siege Gang. And we still need to answer the Phoenix at some point. So we might be better off just tapping out for Snapper, having them counter that, and then try and protect Shalai as kind of our more uh, threatening blocker. Yeah, I mean, we're kind of in a tough spot. They could also get the Phoenix back. I don't know, I think I'll play Shalai. Yeah, if they counter, we can counter back. They use Siege Gang, kill Shalai. Does make them use quite a few resources. So X equals 4. Syncopate for 2. It's 
gonna be Yeshivan fire kicked even. Yeah. This is gonna be tough. Can hope to resolve Snapper double Phoenix even. Yeah, it's gonna be difficult to beat. Pretty much need to resolve a Runus Blast. And that's gonna be difficult with Quende being the only legendary we have. Should have kept a blue here so we could both play Blink and Reproach. But we're probably just dead to Siege Gang activations at this point. Back to number three, sadly. All right, on the play, hand looks decent. Opt into retort. Need any land for Shalai. Forest for Shana. Definitely fine running out opt on turn one, since we're looking for forests, we're looking for more early action. Planes, I don't think I keep. Might regret bottoming that lands, but we're somewhat likely to draw more lands anyway. And I don't think it's necessary to keep up Retort this turn, we're fine tapping out for Scholar. And then next turn we can maybe keep up Retort and Wrath. So this implies Fungal Infection, uh, but it would still trade. And if it's a Vicious Offering, that's a fine exchange for us as well. So, sure. Land is good. So I think we'll keep up Wrath plus Retort. Not gonna try and ambush the token here in case we need to Retort something. Alright, perfect. Now if they try and kill Wrath we can flash in Shalai in response, which is pretty sweet. So hopefully they just sorcery speed try and kill Wrath. I don't think I flash in Shalai if they don't do anything. Since we're winning the race currently. Time of Ice. Alright, I guess... Uh, let's see. We want to let this resolve. They'll target Wrath and then we flash in Shalai. Seems fine. And play a Snapper, not our Hexproof creature. Alright, so our Shield Xano Retort, but shouldn't be too bad. They can only target Shalai. White mana as well. Alright, Sahid is a problem. Although that solves it temporarily. I guess a cool play we can make is on the third chapter of Time of Ice. If we flash in the Trickster, we tap down Zahid and bounce it. And then we can counter it back with Retort. Because this says return all tapped creatures to their owner's hands. So we don't get to attack now. 
but I think that's worth it. And we'll do it before they draw in case they draw a counterspell. Alright, so how much damage can we deal? 9 damage if we bounce. And that'll do it. Sweet. Back to number 2. On the play, got the Surveyor to find our blue mana, so we're good. Tome on two. If the Surveyor dies, we get some free draws with the Tome as well. Ideally, we draw blue mana before then, so we can get our green mana with the Surveyor instead. Turn one, Cabal Stronghold. Interesting. We'll lead with Honor Guard here. So, one must be mono black if they're playing Stronghold. Alright, never mind. It would be pretty painful if our Surveyor gets countered, since it's currently the only way to get blue mana, but I think we gotta go for it. Oof, alright. No Syncopate. And we'll get our Islands. Attack, play Unicorn, keep up Syncopate and Opts. Looks like they might have a fungal infection. Think we let that happen. Alright, just a vicious offering. That's fine. <laughs> Thran Temporal Gateway. Well, that's an interesting twist. If our opponent put this in their deck, what are they trying to cheat into play here? Zahids, maybe? Who knows, maybe they've got a Joso in there, which is why they also have Cabal Stronghold. Slim Vodas, good point. Yeah, probably gotta syncopate that. Like, for all we know, this gateway's gonna do nothing, but the risk is pretty high. And also, the gateway would play around all our future counter spells, so it's probably safer to just counter the gateway itself. Familiar, that's okay. And a compass, that's definitely okay. So far only an instant in the graveyard, so probably don't want to conjecture quite yet. I think I'll main phase the opts. See what we can find. Bottom that one. Alright, Raph's a good one. I'll offer the trade. Question is, do we play out the planes? Or do we keep it in hands? In case uh, we need to discard it with Tome. The difference between 5 and 6 isn't going to be huge, since we still can't Raph plus Tome. So I think I'll hold the land for now. Also, if they play Kick Skin Witch, we want to be able to keep Wrath. Opponent finally gets access to double black, thanks to Compass. Final parting. Opponent going real deep. Let's see what they get. Whoa, Sapper Wing. Thank you so much for the $20 donation there, it's very generous. Alright, so our opponent puts a self-replicator in the graveyard, and we don't know what they got. But we drew a Syncopate, which is quite excellent here, so we get to attack. And then keep up both Syncopate and Wrath. Soul Salvage, makes sense. So what happens if we let that resolve? 
Flash and Wrath, attack for 6, put them to 6. If they tap out for Replicator, we Syncopate and then they're dead. I think I'll let that resolve. Alright, that complicates matters a little bit. Still get to attack with everyone. Opponent gets to block 2, take 4, down to 8. And then we'll still keep up Syncopate. We can also play Conjecture at Instant Speed thanks to Wrath, get back another Syncopate or an Opt. And Shanna's good discard fodder for Tomb. So if they tap out for Replicator, we can Syncopate for one and then still use Tome if they play land. So that doesn't work. Definitely need to counter that one. If only we had a Shala in hand right now for the blowout. So X equals two, which means we can't Tome. Game goes on. Candle can now kill Wrath. Yeah, we could definitely be in trouble. Although they'll need a land before they can actually use a candle. So if they miss for a turn, then there is hope. Get to flash in a Quen the end of turn as well, so I guess we might be okay. Attack. Doesn't attack, gives us GG. All right, resolves. Cast down Scholar, that's fine. So they still need something else. And now Blink should be pretty good here. Attack with all. No need to Blink the Servants. Although I guess we could do that. Yeah, it's probably the safest play here. Blink Servants, if they counter it, they're still dead. And if they blink Quende, they're dead. If they blink Raft, they're dead. So for three mana, I don't think they'll have anything. I guess they could Compass, make this into a different color. But even still. White. All right. All right, still rank two. The suspense. A potentially very good hand. We basically need to draw two lands, including an island. And then we get to Tatiova plus Runa's Blast. It's definitely a little bit sketchy, but we've got a Tome to kind of smooth out our draw. And if it doesn't work out, we can always ditch the Blast or the Tatiova with Tome. Alright, there's Islands. So even though Tome gets exiled by Runa's Blast, I think it's worth it to play it out. In case the... Tatiova plan doesn't. Alright, it's an aggressive start. Burden to Relic Runner. Play the island so we keep up retort. And then we can loot if uh, we don't have to counter anything. I mean, potentially this is good for us if they're running into Runa's Blast, but if they can counter Tatiova or Blast, we could be a bit too far behind. So we'll ditch probably Islands. This is where having a Wrath would be amazing, since then we could flash in Tatiova and our other cards as well. Gotta hope they tap out, but they've got the pressure in place, so they aren't really forced to tap out. Discard planes. 
think we still just play land, say go. Don't think our opponent's gonna cooperate, but one can hope. Our opponent just says go. Alright, that's a cheap play we can make at least. So what about discarding Snapper and then next turn we can play Honor Guard and still have Wizards Retort up and then try and play Tatiova plus land in the same turn. Alright, Conjecture could do some things. Well, that resolved pretty smoothly, so I guess they don't have a counterspell after all, maybe just some bounce spells. Traxos. We might regret not playing the land if our opponent has a syncopate as well, but gotta counter that since it doesn't die to Runa's Blast. Yeah, they might be missing a color as well. Well, next turn we can go for Tatiova plus land. Our approach is good. Do we attack with Honor Guard? Let's say they bounce Tatiova, then I would want to block, I think, so I'll hold back. They might be holding a blink, but decided not to pull the trigger. Alright, Journey Mage makes sense. And an Arcane Flight. Well, that's four damage. Trickster's good, so that can keep us in the game. So we can play Shana as a cheap legendary to set up Runa's Blast. And then we can have both Trickster and Reproach in hand. So that seems quite excellent here. Opponent opts, so that's the card they were holding this entire time. So I'm guessing they're playing Tempest Gin if they're mono blue. Short Sword. Resolves. So we just want them to tap out for more creatures, essentially. Blink, that's fine. So normally we would want to wait until the flyer attacks before tapping it down with Trickster, but we just don't want to take the damage here. And we're gonna wipe the board anyway since we can't afford to block with Shana. So this taps down Relic Runner. And we could reproach the assistance to kind of check for a counter spell, but then we won't have the approach afterwards, although I guess we've got Conjecture to get it back. So what do we lose to? Syncopate, Wizard's Retort, Unwind. Think I'll play it safe. Alright, they don't seem to have anything. Attack with a Trickster, and then we can Runa's Blast, and still play Honor Guard. Could be worth it to save the lands to play Tatiova next turn plus lands. But I just want to get on the board here. Quende is excellent too. So, let's see if we conjecture. We can get back our Wizard's Retort. We won't have Wizard's Retort up this turn as a problem since we're missing a land. So we might be better off just playing Quende. Let's say our opponent plays Tempest Gin, we can always conjecture, get back reproach, so we don't die to it. So we'll main phase the Quende here. To grow the Honor Guard. And Shana as well. And I think we can afford to attack with both. 
if they have a Murfolk Trickster, we're still not dead. Blink Quende. Shalai is great. So I guess we'll play Shalai here instead of Quende. I guess now we would have died to a Murfolk Trickster end of turn, so maybe should not have attacked with both. Alright, GG's. I guess not dead on board, but pretty much dead. Sweet. That was a close game. Still at two. Alright, the last one here for all the marbles. Alright, all three colors of mana. Island lets us cast Retort, any land lets us cast Shalai, gotta be a keep. Surveyor's perfect. Get to grab that extra island, gives us a turn three play. And there's a Ruinous Blast for the Wombo Combo. So next turn we have to decide if we want to play Shalai or keep up our tort. I think I'll run out Shalai. We get punished by like a Goblin Barrage or a Fight with Fire. But we want to get this in play to set up the Runas Blasts. Now we're maybe wishing we got our second forests with the Surveyor. But uh, I think getting double blue for a Tort was too important. Puts forest in play. Just want them to play big creatures that die to Runas Blast. Fire Intervention could kill Shalai as well now. Opponent says go. Alright, we'll just uh, attack with Shalai and then keep up our counterspell. Don't think I'm committing the Unicorn since it doesn't really attack and just dies to the Runas Blast. Halar survives the Runas Blast, so could be counter-worthy. Although it doesn't outrace Shalai, so I think we let that happen still. I think we keep Retort for a removal spell for Shalai. And then we can just trade one of our ground creatures for Halar if we want to. So if we wanted to play Journey Mage... Yeah, we don't have a wizard in place, so we can't play Journey Mage and have Retort up. Do we want to play Unicorn to have more blockers for Halar? I guess that's reasonable. Because if they play Kicker card, then the Honor Guard's not going to be enough to block Halar. And we'll just use the Runa's Blast as kind of a emergency board wipe. But I think the main game plan is just to race with Shalai in the air and then use Rotor to protect that. Alright, kick grow from the ashes, that's fine. Let's see if they're splashing or just red green. Just red green. Gotta watch out for those kicked fight with fires. Alright, island means we can bounce Halar and still keep up retort. Still don't have any other good attacks.
because we have Shalai protecting the Journey Mage, we can't run into a situation where our opponent like Sheevan fires Journey Mage, so we can no longer cast Retort and then kill Shalai. So we should be safe. If we ever draw our second forests, we're in great shape. Let's get that out of here. It's not as good as an answer as Syncopate, but hopefully this buys us enough time to just swarm the board. Because our opponent will be able to get it back. So now we want to get aggressive. Yeah, if we had gotten a second forest with Surveyor, this game would have been over. But at the time we didn't have double blue yet. Alright. So right now we're dealing seven. The scout also helps put Multani back into play by putting extra lands in play. So I think we actually reproach the scout here. And keep the unicorn attacking. And hopefully this is good enough. Eight mana, so no kicked fight with fires. And they can't kill our creatures before getting past Shalai. Halar. Corrosivus. So yeah, let's go for it. And that does it, sweet. Ah, still number two. Oh well. Let's claim our prize. Crack some packs. Alright. What do we have here? Oath of the Fairy was our a rare in the first pack. Not a great first pick, not a great card in general. Pretty weak pack overall. Bear doesn't even all that amazing. So pretty disappointing pack to open, not sure what I would take. Probably Bear over Journey Mage, although it's kind of debatable. Unicorn's also decent, I guess. And Four Bears Blade is great, talked about it earlier. Great card to have in any deck, just need to make sure you have enough creatures to equip, and then the blade will do the rest. Uh, Runa's also great, Memorial's also excellent, Vicious Offering. Alright, wanna thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.